Hello everyone and happy Star Wars Day. By the time you're seeing this, it is May the 4th, it is Star Wars Day and I hope you're all relishing in lots of Star Wars goodness today and so am I by bringing you this video. As you know, usually I will post Doctor Who related videos here on this YouTube channel, but longtime followers of my other social medias like Instagram will hopefully know that I am also a huge Star Wars collector as well. And this is something that I haven't really shown before in YouTube videos. So I thought, you know what, for Star Wars Day this year, I will give you a look at my Star Wars collection. Much like my Doctor Who and Marvel collections, the Star Wars stuff ranges all throughout the house, through lots of different areas, throughout my collection room and my bedroom and other areas in the house. So this is the main bulk of it here on this display. So yeah, stick with us. Uh, this might be quite a long winded video and I hope you enjoy. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off at the very top, we have the Force Link, I think it was, Millennium Falcon from Solo. To be honest, I only really have this because it was really cheap. I found it in Matalan in the UK for three pounds. And for that price, I just couldn't say no. So of course I bought it and it's a perfect size for the shelf. And actually it's really nice. I often want to repaint it to really get out some of those lovely details because the detail work is there. So maybe that's something I'll do if the boredom strikes. Moving across, we have the A New Hope retro figures. These fortunately have been available in many UK supermarkets. I found these and the Empire Strikes Back figures in Asda stores for £9.97 each a few years back. And yeah, I really, really like them. They're really cool. I just wish that they didn't have the retro collection stickers and they are a bit fiddly to peel off. So I'm not going to risk it, but I love these figures. They look really good on the shelves. Moving down, we do, of course, have the Empire Strikes Back figures. We have all six of them, Boba Fett, Lando, Han, Luke, Yoda and Leia, as well as some deluxe Black Series figures, such as Jin Erso with the Edu diorama. Kylo Ren and Rey on the Starkiller base. And we have a few little vintage collection figures here, such as the Scarif Stormtrooper. We also have a couple of little oddities, such as this little R2-D2, which I got for free with an eBay purchase. I've got the Obi-Wan Kenobi power link um, microchip thing that came with the Phantom Menace figures. I've just found that in the attic and thought that would be a nice addition to the shelf. And we have here the Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker. Now, why is he missing an arm? I hear you ask. Well, that's because this was the first ever Star Wars figure I ever bought from Woolworths back when the Clone Wars movie came out back in 2008. And it has such a special place in this collection. And yeah, I just love it, even if it is missing one arm. Next to this, we have... The Galactic Republic Celebrate the Saga collection, which I got for Christmas of 2020. We have the Kylo Ren Disney Elite figure, which I got on clearance. And a couple of the little Imperial credits that came with the Mandalorian credit collection figures uh, last year. Down to the next shelf, we have the main bulk of my collection, which is six inch Star Wars Black Series figures. I did once upon a time collect three and three quarter inch Star Wars figures, but unfortunately, when I was younger and very naive, I did sell off my entire collection and I have regretted it ever since. But now I'm back on track recollecting my collection in the six inch format, which to be honest, I much prefer because I think that the bigger scale gives much more detail. And yeah, so here we have I've got them in release order of films. So starting off, we have the prequels. Got the new photoreal Qui-Gon Jinn, Maul, Obi-Wan, Jar Jar, Mace Windu, the original R2, Anakin Padme, some clones, some Genosian battle droids, and Jango Fett lurking in the background. Coming across, we have my Clone Wars collection, which I really hope they expand upon. And we know that they are doing with figures such as Aura Singh and the new Clone Wars wave, which includes Anakin and Obi-Wan and 
Echo. So they will make excellent additions to the collection. We have Cad Bane, Fox, Ventress, Wolf, uh, some Mandalorians, Bo-Katan, which technically is a Mandalorian figure, but I like having her with the Siege of Mandalore section. We have Ahsoka, Rex, 322nd, Into Revenge of the Sith. We have Obi-Wan and Anakin, Dooku, Grievous, and a custom or sort of kit bash, Dark Side, Anakin, which I used the original Anakin figure for. Coming down, we have the Bad Batch. These are brand new figures and they're so good. They're excellent. We have Hunter Crosshair and the Elite Squad clone. Tempted to pick up another Elite Squad clone to add to the collection. Then we have a bit of a break. We have the Act 2 um, Ray and Luke diorama. I got this for my birthday uh, in April last month. And I just don't know where to put it. So I've put it here because it's the only sort of free area that I have. But I'll probably move it. But I really like how this display has turned out. I think it's fantastic with the Island Journey Ray and the Luke Skywalker with the Porks. Coming across, we have Solo, which is a very underrated film in my opinion. I really enjoy Solo. We have most of the characters from that film, including Rio Durant, who is a new addition to the collection. And coming across, we have Rebels. It was one of the big collecting sagas with this collection. Collecting all of the Rebels crew, and they look so good all together. These are mostly the original releases, the only revision figure that I have that came out last year is the Ezra figure because that was ludicrously expensive on the aftermarket, the original. Then we have Rogue One, which if the rumours are to be believed, then we are going to get photo real uh, re-releases of these figures this year. And I kind of hope so because these head sculpts do nothing for the actors. But then again, I probably wouldn't pick them up. But I love Rogue One as well and I'm thrilled to have the figures from it. Moving down, we have the Bounty Hunters. I thought I'd give these a shelf all to themselves because, I mean, let's face it, they're awesome. We have all six of the iconic Bounty Hunters from the Empire Strikes Back. And I just love these figures. They're so, so, so good. Moving across, we have A New Hope. We have Tarkin, the Hollow Table. Ben Kenobi, which uses the head sculpt of the new... Kenner uh, retro figure that came out just recently and that head sculpt is a spitting image of Alec Guinness it's incredible we have the hollow table which oh, you can press the button and we have the princess Leia speech to Obi-Wan I cut there because it went on for a bit and I thought you didn't want to listen to the entire thing because I'm sure you all knew it off by heart anyway so carrying on, we have a lot more A New Hope figures, Rebel Troopers, Han, Chewie, Luke, some Jawas, some Astromex, the Retro Greedo. I know it's not film accurate, but it's good enough for me. I like that figure. We have lots of Luke Skywalker figures here, Wedge Antilles in, hiding in the corner there, and some Stormtrooper helmets from the Han and Luke in Stormtrooper disguise. Moving down again, we have my little Tatooine tribute shelf. We have Luke and the Land Speeder, which is a fantastic set, which I got for Christmas a few years back. We have the Sand Troopers, a couple of Tusken Raiders, and the Astromech, which for the life of me, I can't remember what the Astromech is called. I think it's R5 something. If you know what that is, please let me know down in the comments below, because I'm currently kicking myself for that. Next up, we have the Empire Strikes Back shelf, which is a bit of a continuation of the Bounty Hunter shelf. We have such a good assortment of figures here. We have Han, Luke and Leia and Chewie, the Dagobah collection with that fantastic Luke and Yoda with R2. The... Um, Han Solo, we have the Minoc, Han Solo, the Wampa, Vader, a lot of Hoth figures, we have the Protocol Droid, uh, sorry, Probe Droid, um, the brand new 
Photo Real Hoth Han, which is such a good figure. Torn Torn, a couple of Hoth Troopers in the background there. You can just about make them out there. And here we have Luke as he appears in The Empire Strikes Back when he's hung upside down by the Wampa. That's just a pin in the shelf um, with a bit of tape keeping his legs together. I just wanted to spr spruce up the shelf a bit, so that's why that's there. We have the Minoc below it. Next shelf down, we have the iconic Jabba the Hutt and my Jabba's Palace tribute shelf. We have Jabba, the Slave Layer, which is in desperate need of an upgrade by Hasbro, the Gamorrean Guard, Lando, Luke and Han in Carbonite. Moving across, we have my Return of the Jedi tribute shelf with the Emperor and two guards with a spare Emperor. This was the original release with the accessories from the deluxe set, much akin to the Anakin Skywalker further up the shelf. We have Darth Vader when he's redeemed. Admiral Piet, the Emperor's Wrath, Darth Vader, which I know a lot of people don't like. I have such a soft spot for that figure. I think it looks fantastic. The Jedi Knight, Luke Skywalker. Admiral Akbar at the back there. The speeder bike with Biker Scout. And then my Endor collection with Han, Luke and Leia in their Endor get-ups. 3PO, this was the 3PO from the Chewbacca and 3PO set. Which came out a few years back. But the shelf space just wasn't going to accommodate having 3PO in the bag. So I've stuck the figure together and he's now a sort of Endor version of 3PO. Then we have Obi-Wan and Yoda in their Force Ghost appearances. In desperate need of an Anakin in Force Ghost appearance. And we have some Ewoks. And that is a vintage collection wicket. But it does depart. Moving down, we have a bit of a one-off display of Rey and the Speeder from Force Awakens. To be honest, I've got nothing else to put on the shelf, so this is going to have to do. But it's a really nice set, actually, um, with some fantastic detailing on the Speeder. Moving across, we have my Mandalorian shelf, which is one of my favourite shelves in the collection. We have all sorts of fantastic figures here. Moff Gideon, the Armourer, Grief Karga, Queel, all the versions of Mando, and even with a couple of Credit Collection Death Troopers back there. And we have, of course, the unmasked Din Djarin and Grogu set, which I paid quite a sizable amount of money for on eBay because they sold out like hotcakes here in the UK because for some reason Hasbro thought it would be a good idea to make it a Smiths exclusive. And Smiths is just about one of the worst toy shops in the UK for getting Star Wars stuff at. So eBay it was. Moving down, we have one long shelf here of sequel trilogy figures. This used to be a far bigger display, but recently I've downsized this by quite a lot and mushed all the figures together just because it was taking quite a lot of space on the collection and the sequels aren't really my favourite era of Star Wars. But here we have quite a lot of the figures released from the sequel tri trilogy, like the original Rey, which, yeah, that's not Daisy Ridley. We have Finn in the Stormtrooper disguise, Kylo Ren, Hux, Phasma, Stormtroopers, the unmasked Kylo Ren. There's quite a few of them on the shelf. Snowtroopers, Snoke, Praetorian Guards, Rose, another unmasked Kylo Ren, this time from Last Jedi. Holdo, DJ, who was, yeah, one of the more forgettable characters in that film. The Executioner, Stormtrooper, and then Sith Troopers, the Rise of Skywalker, Rey and Kylo. Jaina, 3PO, with... Babu Freak and Dio, or as I like to call him, the hair, hair dryer droid. Then we have the Dark Side Ray and the Knight of Ren. So, regardless of your opinion on the films, I quite like the figures. I think the figures are quite good. 
And then coming down, we have just a miscellaneous shelf. These are the, um, what were they called? The Titanium Collection, which came out a few years back. We have Finn, Ray, and Kylo Ren. I know that they also did some for A New Hope, but I never got them. Then here we have just some uh, advent calendar, little mini builds just thrown on this shelf. Um, I didn't think much of this past year's advent calendar, but I've still got the builds. And at the back here, we have a black series three and three quarter inch Anakin Skywalker. Why? I, I have no idea. I don't know why that's there, but it is. Coming across, we have the final shelf on this display, which is my Expanded Universe collection, which is a shelf that I adore. We have so many amazing characters and figures on this shelf. We have Darth Revan, Prototype Boba, Jaina Solo, the gaming greats Django Fett, uh, BT-1, Heavy Battle Droid, the fantastic clone commander Obi-Wan Kenobi with that incredible head sculpt. Carl Kestis with his droid, which again I can't remember the name of. The Shadow Squadron. We have the second sister Inquisitor at the back there. Then we have my Galaxy's Edge figures with the fantastic Hondo figure and the droids from Galaxy's Edge as well. And then finally we have a Darth Nihilus. I'm hoping to get some more, especially the upcoming comic book figures to really expand this shelf into all areas of Star Wars but it's such a good shelf I really really love the selection and the variety of figures on the shelf. Finally we have the Kenner inspired Forlorn and Zuckus figures with the misnamed cards. This was an Amazon exclusive I think and I got it on a flash deal so I paid not a lot of money actually for these two figures and I thought I'd keep them on the cards because they look really good. So I'm really happy with these figures. And then coming across we have, as I said before, the retro Obi-Wan Kenobi, which actually isn't mint on card. I have taken this off to swap the head. The head on this figure is the head that came with the actual Ben Kenobi figure, the proper one. But I'm not a big fan of the orange look, so I just swapped the heads and it makes for a much better figure for the proper one. And actually, I think the lesser head sculpt on this figure suits the retro design a little bit more. So I'm really happy with this. And then finally, we have the ginormous snow speeder. I got this for Christmas, not knowing where to put it. It's now May and I still don't know where to put it, so it's just of at the bottom of the shelf obscuring the plug sockets so yeah but it's a fantastic piece and it's much much bigger than even I thought it was going to be I thought I'd be able to fit it on one of these shelves like sort of width ways but I was soon disapproved of that notion so there you go guys there is my main Star Wars collection one little addition that I forgot to mention is the Darksaber, which I got for Christmas last year. This isn't the Black Series one, this is just the cheap um, light-up Darksaber, but it's really cool nonetheless, and it lights up and it makes all the sounds. It'll do me just well. Coming across then to the other sort of continuation of the Star Wars section, we have a pot of Star Wars accessories. These are all the accessories that came with all of these figures. So I've put them all in one little place. We'll just put that to one side. We have the Boba Fett premium roleplay helmet. This thing is incredible. I absolutely adore it. And I I'll be honest, I love walking around the house wearing that thing. It's fantastic. Then we have some knockoff Lego Mandalorians, which I got as a gift. And we have the two Black Series um, sort of deluxe premium sort of statuettes. So we have Hoth Luke with the foot of the Atat and an explosion. And we have Darth Vader breaking through the door of the Tantive Four from the start of A New Hope. And I think these do light up. Yes, they do. 
I wasn't sure if I'd switch them on. But yeah, so these light up. Does the Darth Vader one light up? It does. So there we go. I got these for about £15 for the two on eBay. And yeah, I mean, they take up quite a lot of space, but they're really cool additions to the shelf, actually. So while that was the main bulk of my collection, there is more. This is now in my bedroom. That was downstairs in my collection room. And upstairs, I've got my carded vintage collection figures. So we've got the Clone Wars Anakin and Obi-Wan, Captain Rex, Fives, Wolf and a generic clone trooper. And then we've got a selection of other figures from the other platforms in the Star Wars saga. But I mainly focus on getting the vintage style Clone Wars figures on these fantastic photo reel cards. They just look fantastic. And I can't wait for the Ahsoka and Maul figures to come out later this year. Moving across from this, we have a very new addition to the collection, actually, which is the retro Mandalorian figures. They're here on the wall in my room just because, well, I didn't have any room for them downstairs like I did for the A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back figures. So I thought I'd put them here and I might line the rest of this wall with the... A New Hope and Strikes Back figures and yeah so that might be quite a good display to do in the future but here we have all seven of the new Mandalorian figures IG-11, Queel, Moff Gideon, Cara Dune, The Child, or Grogu or Baby Yoda however you like to say it, Grief Karga and of course Mando and these were from Asda stores here in the UK and to my surprise, when I got to the checkout, they were only £7.50 each, which is, I think, a bit of a bargain. And the final, final piece in my Star Wars collection is a piece that I absolutely adore and I have hidden behind a Green Arrow figure so and a Ghost Rider figure. So if I just move these figures and statues, you'll be able to see the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. 501st Legion Arc Trooper set, which came out last year. This is such an incredible set that I absolutely love with Echo Fives and Jesse. This came out last summer, just after the Clone Wars finished, and just, just after we saw the conclusion of the Clone Wars, which Jesse had a surprisingly prominent role in, and it reaffirmed my love for Star Wars especially the Clone Wars, so buying this was a no-brainer. Just next to this as well, we have a little Lego Jewel on Mustafar set. Turns out there is a piece that I did forget to tell you all about, which was the Lego Millennium Falcon. This is the Rise of Skywalker version, as you can tell by the minifigure selection. And God, I love this set. I built this after handing in a university paper, so... It was a good de-stressing exercise from university work. And yeah, I just absolutely love this set. And finally, but by no means least, we have the Lego Razor Crest, which after the Mandalorian Season 2 is one of my absolute favourite vehicles in all of Star Wars. So buying it in Lego was an absolute must. But unfortunately, it is because of the awkward size of the thing, it is sort of put amongst the Doctor Who collection because I just can't think of anywhere to put it where it would do it justice for now. So there we go guys, there is my Star Wars collection for 2021. I will probably update it on May the 4th, 2022. Um, I might make this a bit of a tradition to do it every May the 4th just to see how the collection has grown and expanded. But there we go guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed recording it and I hope you all have a very happy Star Wars Day. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time for another video, whatever that may be. Take care, bye.